In this worked example, we're going to look at how you interpret archaeological data about galaxies. In particular, let's say you look at a whole bunch of old stars in a galaxy like our own. What can you learn about the history of the galaxy from it? This is what we call galactic archaeology. So the first thing we can do is for each star we can measure how old it is. Don't ask how, it's hard. So what we can plot is number of stars against age. So these are very young stars, and these stars say are 10 billion years old. And let's say we see a curve that looks something like this. Now what can we deduce from that? Well, it's fairly clear that the galaxy for started forming about 10 billion years ago, and sometime around here, maybe 9 billion years ago, the bulk of the stars are being formed. How can we tell that? Well, what we're looking at here is low-mass stars. Low-mass stars, like red dwarfs, have lifespans of hundreds of billions of years, so none of them have ever died. Every red dwarf that's ever been born in the galaxy is still there. So the fact that so many of them are about 9 billion years old, telling us that about 9 billion years ago, lots of them were formed. More recently, star formation rate has tailed off. OK, that's one clue. But now let's look at a slightly different graph. Now let's look at the typical iron in a star against age. So this is the iron abundance. And what's this going to look like? Let's say it looks something like this. Now what can we deduce from this? Well, what we can see is that very older stars have no iron, which is what you'd expect. These are the stars that were born out of the primordial gas from the Big Bang, which is just hydrogen and helium. But very soon, the stars have acquired quite a bit of iron. Where can that iron have come from? Well, it can't be made in the middle of these low-mass stars, because the low-mass stars don't really mix the material up. You're not going to see the iron made in their core on the surface. Almost certainly what happened is, at the same time that the low-mass stars were formed, high-mass stars were also formed. They all seem to go together, but the high-mass stars don't last very long, and some fraction of them would have exploded to make type 2 supernovae almost at once and dump their iron out. So the stars forming, say, here, just a hundred million years or so after the first stars are formed, have been enriched by the iron squirted out by the type 2 supernovae. But very soon this curve starts flattening out, and that's because we're now past the peak of the star formation. Only a few stars are forming now, and so there's not much of it going supernovae. And then it starts climbing again over here, what's that, about four billion years ago, four giga years. What's happening here is we're starting to get the type 1a supernovae forming. So the very first stars that were born over here, some of them were very massive and exploded right away, and that gave us this amount of iron. But some that were a bit lower mass turned into white dwarf stars and eventually started exploding over here, so six billion years later, and they producing iron here. So what we're seeing here is an echo of the first burst of star formation. So what we can tell is here is the iron from type 2 supernovae, and here is the iron from type 1a supernovae. And we can tell there seems to have been about a roughly 5 billion year delay between the peak of star formation and when stars from there started turning into type 1a supernovae, white dwarfs that explode.